All right, hey guys, it's uh, Calvin with Cal Carfax here, and today I was reading on the forums some common stuff, and I know this is one of the most common topics that you know everyone talks about all the time. You know, it's all over the place, and there's a million threads. Uh, but I'm gonna do a quick shout out to ShopDap.com. Uh, they did a pretty cool article on uh, the 2.0 TSI common problems and what to look out for. So I'm going to kind of just do a quick recap and um, so this is this is my interpretation of what they said. You know, if you don't want to take the time to read the article, you can just listen to what I have to say. Uh, so most of the, you know, because Volkswagen uses Audi engines and vice versa, you know, some differences here and there, but, you know, generally uh, some similar engine stuff. So, um, so basically the cars that, uh, the cars currently uh, up to 2015 that use, uh, you know, the 2.0 TSI are going to be the Mark V, the Mark VI GTI, uh, Mark V Jetta, Mark VI Jetta, the B6 Passat, uh, the CC, the EOS, the Tiguan, the Beetle, uh, and then I'm sure there's, you know, there's a couple more, but we're in 2016 now, so, you know, if these cars are probably getting cheaper, so more people are going to be able to afford them. Uh, so first up on the problems list is going to be uh, ignition. ignition. Can I say ignition? Ignition. Ignition. Ignition coil misfire fault codes. So, um, quoting here, if you have miss, if you're having this pro misfire problems on your Volkswagen or Audi 2.0 TSI engine, uh, the root of the problem is probably looks like here. Oh, I see. It's your coils. Uh, so that can either cause a check engine light, or you know, you'll just be running rough or poor idle things like that. Uh, and then they actually do provide a link in how to diagnose it, so I'll put that in the, um, in the, whatever caption below. Uh, another big thing that I haven't had a problem with, but I've actually had a friend who had this problem, uh, is the positive crank crankcase vent, which is also known as PCV, the PCV valve. You probably hear people throw that around. Um, generally, on a 2.0 TSI engine, if you're having problems. Most Volkswagen techs or Volkswagen, you know, whoever's are going to be go quick and check that first because that's usually the root of a lot of problems. Um, you can usually hear a loud whistle um, and it can also cause a fault code. It can cause your system to run too lean. Like me, if I, I right now have a check engine light for bad O2 sensor, but I thought that was my PCV because I'm running too lean. So that's just, um, you know, that's just something to look out for. And, um, you know, maybe get checked before you buy the vehicle or ask them, you know, what kind of state that's in, if it's been replaced, because uh, some of them will totally fail and it's under warranty. So just make sure you ask, you know, is it replaced? Can I get it replaced under warranty and just prevent further stuff down the line? Um, wow, there's such a glare here. Um, all right, so another problem that I know I've had is going to be your 2.0 TSI intake manifold. And that's going to be your runner flap, and so those are those are just runner flaps in there that kind of, I don't I don't exactly know what they do, um, but I know that they you know they open and close depending on your throttle and stuff like that. Um, so sometimes it can just periodically throw fault codes and be broken, or it cannot be broken, uh, especially if you're running a modified Volkswagen and you're not you know opening up meaning going above thirty five hundred you know to wherever else in the rev range. If you're not opening it up, then I've had that problem where, um, before I had my car, you know, it was my family's car, um, you know, for about a year, two years. Um, so, you know, I convinced them, you know, get this, get this, because I know that I'm gonna get the car, right? So, you know, get this, oh, get that. You know, and look, I did get the car. Uh, so anyway, so I know a problem that we've had was, uh, you know, your intake manifold uh, they actually ended up just replacing my whole manifold, um, and I think it ended up being around $200, so almost everything was covered under warranty, which is awesome. I mean, you never, you know, nobody wants to pay out of pocket crap. Um, so again, I'll provide a link for that if you want to read more about that and, you know, how to prevent that, how to fix it, what can you do. Uh, another problem that a lot, a lot of modified Volkswagen's will have is your diverter valve. And so oftentimes it's not the diverter valve itself that's failing, but it's this little seal that goes in there um, and that'll break. 
and you know typically under stock boost you know no mods really maybe an exhaust and an intake you're not going to have any problems but as soon as you go stage two and you're running 18 19 you know psi versus like what's 15 16 17 ish um stock excuse the yelling um then you can have problems i haven't had that problem but it can tear and especially on the earlier mark six uh, I don't I don't know exactly about the Mark Fives, but I know for the Mark Six it can be a problem, uh, especially on the earlier models. I think they revised it later. Um, boo -doo -doo. And that can also throw a fault code. You know, there's a there's like 166 things that can cause a fault code. So you, you know, if you can invest in uh, you know VCVS or whatever. Uh, another problem that I haven't had, but a lot of people have, is going to be your high pressure fuel pump. Um, so I'm going to quote here, well, the FSI engine was known to have issues. That's why, you know, you go stage two and you, you know, have to upgrade, uh, quoting again, uh, is known to have issues with your fuel pump and cam followers. The TSI engine has some problems around the H, uh, HPFP, which is high flow pressure fuel pump. Uh, the TSI, uh, uses a roller type cam. So wearing them is no longer an issue, but um but high pressure but the high pressure fuel pump itself can fail i haven't had that problem i don't know anyone that's had that problem but if you look all over the forums it, you know it's prevalent uh, and that can also throw a fault code so uh something that i've been wanting to do for a long time that is supposedly increases fuel mileage uh helps with longevity and just gives you peace of mind really is uh carbon cleaning so you know it's not it's not using sea foam whatever, you know, bullshit, it's actually taking it to the dealership or, you know, someone like Pure Motorsport here in San Diego where they know what they're doing and they're actually going to clean it. Uh, it's not using sea foam, you know, bullshit. So uh, basically, I'm going to quote here, all direct engine, all direct injection engines have this particular issue, which is something that anyone with this engine should be aware of. Carbon buildup on your intake valves of your TSI can cause cold, start misfires among other things so maybe that's something that i need to look into and you need to look into because you know sometimes it'll go click 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 and then it turns over and there's no issues you know all my spark plugs are replaced my cars are replaced you know everything's working fine but maybe this is maybe this is the problem or it's just really cold and i haven't started the car in two days you know so you really kind of have to you know just take a guess and if you can afford it go and get your carbon build up clean but i wouldn't go until forty thousand miles because generally you're not going to have you know enough to justify it unless you're really driving the car 24 7. uh you know in kind of another you know cheap way to help get rid of a lot of the carbon you know you can't get rid of all of it but a nice way to get rid of some of it is actually to just hold your car anywhere between four and six thousand rpms for like four minutes or so i think i read that somewhere and supposedly it'll kind of help alleviate a lot of that um carbon buildup. so that's always uh you know something cool that you can look forward to and try out yourself again i'll provide a link down below and some more information on that uh another big issue is actually going to have fuel injector failure so if you're t i'm quoting here if your TSI is having misfire issues and you have new ignition coils and new spark plugs like me, the next thing you're going to do is want to look at your injectors. Um, you know, unless you're real tech savvy, I, I would just take it to the dealership and, and have them look at it next time you take it in for your, you know, your 40, 60, 80, you know, 100,000 mile. Um, you know, just go ahead and say, hey, can you look at this? Or, hey, can you, you know, tell me if, you know, look, take a look and tell me if they need to be replaced or called and let me know. We can go ahead and do it you know, but tell me the price first. Uh, big problem that I'm scared of next. Um, I don't like this. It makes me so nervous. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. All right. Uh, so this is kind of one of the problems that I'm really debating on if I want to, you know, undertake it. Because uh, I, I don't have the skills or the tools to, to do this myself. Uh, so I'm going to quote here. Uh, the lower timing chain tensioner on the TSI is a potential issue. It is, it is a very... No. And it is imperative that any owner should be aware of. Failing to neglect, to neglect this basically means your engine is going to fail. 
Um, they say catastrophic failure causing the engine damage when the engine jumps time. And I'll provide a link again for more information um, from Dash Shoot Auto Parts. Um, anyway, so I know ECS tuning, actually, I'll, you know, I'll provide a link to that too. Uh, I know that they, I know, I don't know exactly what years, but I know the later years got a revised version and the earlier years had the one that can fail and there's really no warning for it. Um, you know, some people will say, I've heard of Volkswagen Tech because I asked him, you know, is this something I need to be fixing or aware of? And he says, you know, not really. Uh, you know, sometimes if you, you know, turn turn all the windows down and you go through a tunnel and there's no one else, um, you know, these engines are just noisy as hell, you know, tick, 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 tick. You know, people are like, oh, what's wrong with your car? Tick, 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 tick. Oh, nothing, that's just the TSI engine. Uh, they're just loud, but you'll actually hear a sound that can sound similar to uh, marbles in a can, and supposedly that's when you know that you know you're at risk or it's going to fail, and you need to get your ass into the dealership. Um, so I know ECS tuning provides kind of like a repair fix, where uh, you know you could buy that part. I think it's like three, four hundred dollars, maybe even two. Uh, you know, either install it yourself if you have the tools, or you can take it to the dealership and have them do it, and then they're not going to charge you up the ass for the parts. Just you know, really labor which still is you know expensive but you're having peace of mind uh your car is going to run a lot longer um you know and again i me, I'm, I'm more of a perfectionist and i like to be preventative so i would probably also buy the uh you know the whole ultimate timing chain uh, whatever replacement repair from ecs tuning along with the timing tensioner repair upper timing tensioner um but that's just me, you know, you, you don't have to do that. And, you know, I'm sure that if it was really that big of an issue, it, they would sell them, you know, together as a kit, uh, but they don't, you know, and I'm only at 60,000 miles, 61. So it's not really an issue. Um, and then another common issue can be your 2.0 TSA water pump failure. And basically I know that I've had this problem and basically what's going to happen is your belt's either going to start to wear, or it's just gonna fail repeatedly and your engine's gonna overheat. So that can definitely be an issue that you wanna look into. Hi, Ava. And um, I've had that issue and it was replaced under warranty, so I don't have any complaints and I can't really tell you how much it's gonna be. Uh, but I will say that the CT CCTA and then the CBFA uh, engines do have slightly different ones. Uh, there's just, there's like some small difference, you know, uh, but they're, you know, I guess you would say they're not compatible. Um, and that's, I'm pretty sure that's due just to CBFA and living in California. You know, you have stricter emissions and whatever that bullshit. Um, so, whatever. Um, another problem. Wow. Lots of problems. But you know what? I haven't had all these problems. So, you know, this might sound kind of scary and worry you, but I haven't had these problems. And I, you know, I'm, I'm... I'm just letting you know that these can happen with higher mileage, you know, Volkswagen from the, you know, Mark 5 and Mark 6 uh, range. Uh, you know, Mark 7s really haven't been around long enough, you know, to, to have massive failure or do all these things. So, uh, again, this is for Mark 6, Mark 5, you know, Jettas, Passats, B, I think B6, you know, Jettas, um, Beetles, GTIs, Golfs. Um, so, this is a problem I actually didn't know about. Your EVAP purge valve, often called the N80 valve, sends fuel vapors from the gas tank to the engine to be burned. This part can often cause the check gas cap light. So I haven't had this issue, so I'm just going to skip over it. I've never even heard of that issue, so I don't think it's too popular. Um, all right, your 2.0 TSI fuel pump control module. So quoting here, the fuel pump control module is mounted under the rear seat of your car, under the rear seats of your car, just of, this is just above the electrical in a tank low pressure fuel pump. Hold on, I'm gonna reread that. Quoting, the fuel pump control module is mounted under the rear seat of your car. This is just above the electrical in tank low pressure fuel pump. This part can overheat causing issues with the vehicle cutting out. Um, haven't heard of that issue. 
and I don't know anything about that issue, so we're just going to skip over that. Um, so, this kind of ties into an issue that I've had with my Mark V Jetta, but it's a 2.5. It's not a, a TSI or an FSI. Um, basically, the actually this did happen to my GTI and my Jetta. Um, not this particular issue that I'm reading here, the coolant... Uh, the, I guess the coolant temperature sensor can can malfunction, but the problem I've had is actually that the bulb itself, you know, and then of course the tubing actually leak, break, or crack. So that could be either due to the fact that you know I'm in California and it's salty and there's a lot of corrosion, or it could be to the fact that the Jetta was from Arizona with high heat, and you know of course running engines in 110 degree weather, you know stuff something's bound to happen eventually. So. Um, you know, so those are just a common, some common problems with your Mark V, uh, GTI, uh, Jetta, uh, let me just recap actually on all the affected models, uh, I actually missed a few, so again, that's your Mark V, GTI, these are all, uh, TSI or FSI, uh, Jetta, Mark V and 6, GTI, Mark V and 6, your B6 Passat, uh, your CC up to 2015, starting in 2009, uh, your EOS, which is now out of production, sadly. Uh, you know, your Tiguan, your Beetle from 2012 to 2015, not the, uh, you know, older one. Uh, I guess you would say like Mark II. Could, yeah, Mark II. Um, and then your Audi A3, um, which, yeah, the, I mean, most people have Audi A3s now. They're reliable. I have really heard of any issues. Uh, and then your Mark II TT. Uh, not including the TTS because, of course, you know that. I think the Mark II TTS had the 2.5 turbo, which everybody wanted for the Jetta, but it, you know, that's never going to happen. Uh, so anyway, so <clears throat> all right. So as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hold on a second. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to comment below. Tell me, uh, have you had these problems? Is there a problem that I'm missing? Because most importantly, you know, I'm here for you guys. So if there's a problem I'm missing, tell me below. So again, hit that subscribe button. Comment. Tell me what I'm missing. Tell me what you want the next video to be. You know, I'm here for you guys. So really, you know, I'm, I'm counting on you. Subscribe. Tell me what you want to hear. Um, you know, and don't forget we have an Instagram channel at Cal Carfax. As always, I'll catch you guys next time.